Hello there, Nerd Clan. Welcome, of course, to this, the new episode of the Potterverse. And this episode, of course, is brought to you by MinuteWithMary.com. And I am highly encouraging you, as all listeners, to search on Facebook the hashtag MinuteWithMary. You see, I have this completely free group where I share all sorts of skincare and beauty tips and tricks. And I said it's completely free. Um, What I'm focusing on right now is how to take care of your skin If you're wearing a mask, if you're wearing a mask eight hours a day at work, if you're wearing a mask just while you run errands, um, I know that this is going to be a part of many of our lives. So even if it's not necessarily for you, maybe you have a friend or a loved one who has to wear a mask a lot and maybe they're starting to have some breakouts. I'm here to help you. So just search the hashtag Minute with Mary. If you're already in that group, do me a favor. Invite some of your friends on in because we've got a whole week of fun things going on related to masks. Once again, hashtag Minute with Mary. Providence, Rhode Island. Welcome to the Potterverse. It's a podcast dedicated to the book and film universe of Harry Potter. So grab your favorite wands and time turners. Let's step into the night and pursue that flighty temptress adventure. and welcome. My name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I cannot believe we are in the second book. Already. I know I've said this about a kabillion times. You have. It's but I can't believe we're in the second book already. I know. We just, I felt like we just watched the film the other day. Uh, we, I mean, did. we did. We did. <laughs> we did. We did. We did watch Sorcerer's Stone But I just felt, I feel day. like we just began uh, the Sorcerer's Stone like two days ago. Our and, Potter adventure. And the, the Potter adventure continues, ladies and gents, though, though, I did look at the future books. Yeah. <laughs> they take a bit longer. This, this is going to be the long haul, yeah. ladies and gents. <laughs> I was actually thinking... It's going to be a long winter, but a cozy one talking about Potter. Well, I was actually thinking that maybe for the, the you know, after book three, maybe we start combining two chapters into one, uh, into one episode. We'll see. I was thinking about that. I don't know yet, because we got like... We got double the. I was I was reading an article today that this book here, mm-hmm. um, Chamber, Chamber of the Secrets. Secrets, is something along the lines of like eighty thousand words or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Order of the Phoenix is two hundred and eighty thousand words. Yeah, like it's double. I don't know if you can do two chapters in one. I'm kind of down with the chapter per episode. Yeah. I mean, I am too. I, I love, I love the we'll just how, how uniform we'll, we'll it is. It by, we're doing it chapter by episode, at least for this book. Yes, let's let's do it book by book. Mary, Mary is wearing her "What Doesn't Make You Stronger," "What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger" Dumbledore shirt from the Mary and Blake store today. I am wearing my Mars is Bright Tonight shirt from the Mary and Blake store. Make sure you do go there and check those things out. I'm so they are excited! The best. I'm excited to make make all the Lockhart shirts. <laughs> Oh my gosh, they're going to be so good. <laughs> every line that comes from Lockhart, Lockhart's mouth is going to be a shirt. I mean, not every line. Yeah, no, every line. Like, he talks a lot. And then He's we're going to have a lot vain. of shirts. Oh my, gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. All right, so the quote for tonight, coming from uh, this chapter, of course, is Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. No cards, no presents. And he would be spending the evening pretending not to exist. He gazed miserably into the hedge. He had never felt so lonely. More than anything else at Hogwarts, more than even playing Quidditch, Harry missed his best friends, Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger. They, however, didn't seem to be missing him at all. Neither of them had written to him all summer, even though Ron had said he was going to ask Harry to come and stay. Poor Harry. Worst birthday ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's actually a thing that happens a lot in in the the, the, the Potter verse. Let's just say, Harry, when he goes home to the to the Dursleys, yeah. Well, he goes back to the Dursleys, not home. But when he goes back to the Dursleys, he's often just left alone and, and by everybody, and, oh, yeah. and for different reasons, of course, for one thing or another. But he's just left alone. He is. And I think that's by design. It's something that I want to talk about in this in this review later on. But yeah, I, I, you find that quite often. Would you agree? Yeah, you know, and I just feel really bad that Harry has to celebrate his birthday 
generally with with the Dursleys. Um, you know, it's like I want I want them to celebrate his half birthday, but that would be December thirty first. So a lot of kids still wouldn't be at school then anyway if they were if Harry was celebrating the holidays at Hogwarts. Um, but you just feel bad. You feel bad for people who have seven summer birthdays in general. You don't get to have all that merriment in school. You feel bad for the people, <laughs> pretty much our entire family, who had COVID birthdays, and many of you, of course. So you just you feel terribly. But Harry, in addition to this, is just treated so poorly that they want him to pretty much not exist on his birthday. Right, so right. Um, obviously we're going to be getting into this really fun, simple chapter. Um, but before we do, we wanted to remind you to please subscribe to the podcast in your podcatcher of choice. Maybe you're just finding us here on Facebook. Maybe you tune in here on Facebook. But know that when you hit that subscribe button in the podcast app, um, it will be automatically downloaded to your phone. You can also check out our other podcasts by going to maryandblake.com. And you can follow us on all sorts of social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube by searching Mary and Blake. Last but not least, we would love for you to head on over to jointhenerdclan.com. It got a facelift for anyone who's already a patron there. This is where for as little as $2 a month, you can contribute towards uh, our media company and make sure that podcasts like this come to you. Because of course, all of these are complimentary to you. We want to s- spread the joy. We say we want to be the Lumos in the time of Knox, and we love that we can do that, but it really is things to support like you. So if you do tune in weekly, if you do listen, know that as little as $2 a month at jointhenerdclan.com does go to making all of this possible, and we truly appreciate your support. I solemnly swear that I'm up to no good. Okay, Blake, you ready for a little synopsis yes, of this let's get chapter? Yes, let's see if you can continue your perfect streak. <laughs> okay, um, so we recap basically the entire Sorcerer's Stone very quickly. Uncle Vernon is having some super VIPs over for dinner. Harry needs to act like he doesn't exist on his birthday because everyone just kind of forgets about it. And then he has a visitor on his bed. <laughs> Good job. Ta-da! You're getting much better at this. You're welcome. Well, this is simple. This this was was... literally like, here's what happened to Sorcerer's Stone in case you just picked up this book. Yes. And didn't know what was going on. Um, Yeah, it's funny. I forgot how simple this chapter was. As you get further into the series, you... You don't get these recaps, obviously. They just expect you. Like, if you've made it this far, you you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. But... You know, for this just to be the second book, for this to be a year after the first had come out, maybe people did did need a little refresher. So we start off once again on Harry's birthday. And this reminded me of This Is Us. Because you know how there's always like, it's always so poignant about the big three's birthday and Jack's birthday. Um, So it just, I just kind of got the This Is Us feels. Mm -hmm. Where I wanted to like time travel a little bit, like see different time zones and and was missing the Pearsons desperately. Got you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, but it was just like a nice little thing like, oh, yeah, we do start on his birthday like all the time. So. Wow. You're not even plugged in. Marvin, you got to hear this stuff. That was- I heard it through you. You are pretty much deaf, darling. Huh? I exactly. <laughs> I hear all the sound cues from your headphones, which I shouldn't even hear things out of your headphones, but things are so loud. I don't even need it. Well, I got to make sure that everything is just right. Well, the problem is, is that it's so loud. Even with my headphones in, I'm going to have to be like one of those pop stars, you know, like one ear on, one ear off. And so you're going to look look really good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, Harry Potter. He's like the Pearson family. Like how not cool am I right now? (laughs) Wait, no, no, no. Just, just go back. Just go back. There you go. So July 31st. (laughs) Potter celebrates party alone. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> Just a total new age Mariah Carey. Just there for Harry go. Potter. Yeah, of I'll course. Of course. Um, you know, the, the, the beginning of this book is uh, a stark contrast to how the first book begins. And Mary, you're right. This is a very simple chapter. It, it mm-hmm. is something that... Just, you know, it kind of recaps everything that happened in the first book. I, I think that's by design, obviously, number yeah. one, to catch kids up. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, if you I, haven't... I'm not a kid, excuse me. And to catch you up, because this is your first time reading but this But if book. you haven't read the book, it, uh, you haven't read The Sorcerer's Stone in a long time, uh, it, it's meant to catch you up. Uh, but also, it's there, I think, as a recap of 
for for Harry himself uh, for because in this in this chapter we are specifically in Harry's POV. In fact, we have a number of instances where you hear his thoughts the way that he mm-hmm. thinks them, and they are highlighted by the fact that it's in italics, which you don't really get in the Sorcerer's Stone. This is something new, yeah, uh, and it's almost as though it is Harry's like. Um, memory of it all mm. like it's it's almost like how he remembers things which is really interesting uh, but i think what's even more important is the way that it begins it it plops you right into the middle of of the world right it plops you right into the middle of the dursleys for example um the, the fir- i hate that word yeah <laughs> plop uh, the the first book takes you remember if you if you remember that first chapter it takes you through like this lyrical well, not the first chapter. Yeah, the but first chapter you're with, with Dumbledore. The Dursleys. And... It, but the first okay. chapter with the, with the Dursleys, sorry. That first chapter with the Dursleys takes you through their house and it's showing you all mm-hmm. the pictures and it's like introducing you to the space. And I remember talking about that with you and being like, whoa, this was really cool. I wish they had yep. done this in the film. Uh, none of that exists here in the uh, second book. In the worst birthday. You, yeah, you are right in it. Mm-hmm. And uh, sooner rather than later, you're getting frying pans thrown at your head. Can we just have a moment? <laughs> that was like, if we did GBGs, that would have been my bad. She threw a soapy frying pan at his head. Well, she head. didn't throw it. <clears throat> <laughs> I thought she did. You thought so? Mm-hmm. Oops. Hold on. I messed what? that up. Oh, there's still a little line. Oh, there we go. Technical difficulties. There we go. Um, So... Everyone's in a tizzy in the family because Vernon's having these important builders over yep. and his wife and hoping that they'll want to buy a lot of drills. So they get all done up and they're planning their, their night, of course. I just needed to say they have them come over at eight. Mm-hmm. That's late. What are we doing? Is this normal? Is this just like how Europeans all rule? Like I know I feel like that'd be a very European thing to do. Yeah, and they're like Italians have really late dinner. Like eight is normal for dinner. Um but I was just thinking about it. I'm like, does that mean that everyone goes to work late the next morning? So if you have somebody over for eight o'clock dinner mm-hmm. and then Petunia lets them sit down for dinner, she invites them to the dining room table for eight fifteen. Th- that means there's no like crackers and cheese you no, know oh, it's no, like no. you're coming in you're getting right to it you are let's eat this this roast right <laughs> away <laughs> but it just made me wonder i'm like is this is this how things are in england mm-hmm. do you have people over for eight o'clock because to me i'd be like are you crazy how about six like six and we schmooze until seven then we have dinner mm-hmm. Then you're out of my house by 9.30, and I go and get my jammy jams by 10. Like, I don't want you here. <laughs> <laughs> At latest 10. You yeah. should be really out of here by 9.30. Yes. So that way I am in bed by 10. But I did nanny for an English couple, which how backwards is that? That is very backwards. Right? My name's Mary, so I'm kind of like Mary you Poppins. You are the anti-Mary Poppins. I'm the American Mary Poppins. <laughs> yeah, kid. Yeah, sure. Here's some chicken fingers. Here's some ginger ale. Go to town. <laughs> <laughs> Go over there. Get you, get you a hot chocolate. <laughs> yeah, you want to mix it with the ginger ale? That's a great Stop. idea. I was not like Go that. Over I was there. actually amazing. I'm watching my shows. Go to your room. But Leave she, me alone. She had... Um, I was always amazed because, you know, she had two young kids. <laughs> and... She used to have dinner parties for, you know, just like a couple. It wasn't a big dinner party, but she used to have company over for dinner, like on school week nights. And I was like, what is this? Like she's starting, she was starting roasts. Maybe it's a thing. She would start roast. She'd come home from work and she'd like plop the roast in the oven and she'd be like, oh yeah, so-and-so is coming over later tonight. And I'd leave at like 536 and she's saying later tonight. And I'm like, how late? And they've got the kids, and she wakes up early, so maybe this is just a thing. Yeah. Uh, one of the other things that happens here, too, in this chapter is we have uh, Vernon going over the fact that he is trying to do the social climbing and the uh, the, the job climbing of selling his drills to a very important person, mm-hmm. something that will make him, will f- allow him to get a vacation home in uh, Mallorca, 
<laughs> uh, which is which is interesting. There's also this great bit of line too uh, that the author writes where Harry is Where's saying, "Where's Mallorca?" I, I whatever it doesn't matter. But you don't know. I, I don't. You're making me feel better. Um, where the the author writes. Oh, you know, Harry couldn't really get all that excited about it because he wasn't sure if the Dursleys would like him better in Mallorca than they already do here in England <laughs> or something along those lines. Um, great, great bit of, uh, great bit of. Uh, it's an island off of Spain. There you go. Yeah, it sounded Spanish. Yeah. But I just didn't want to like. Like near like Barcelona. Yeah, sure. There you go. Yeah, whatevs. Yeah, I'm in. Oh, it's not an island. It's a town on an island. Whatever. Yeah. Okay, fine. Stats of a nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Stats of a nerds. Yes. Um, but in this whole process, Vernon is doing this thing where he's having everybody rehearse what they're doing. And it, it's just so very British. And it's just so very planned and disingenuous. Uh, I don't think it's disingenuous. I think it's like I was reading that. And if I was having an important dinner party and I needed to really impress these people, you dang well know. I'd be going timetables with you. Uh, probably. Okay, at seven o'clock. <laughs> One of my favorite things that Mary does. <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> One of my favorite things that Mary does uh, when when we're going to a party or we're going to see somebody that we haven't seen in a while. Yeah. I think you do this. You don't even realize you're doing it. I don't know what you've been talking about. So though. right before we get there, or like a minute or two before we park, she comes up. She like she like puts her hand on my hand, and she's like, "All right." So we're going to see Janie. Janie is married. I give you talking points. I do. Janie's married to Bobby. <laughs> they have. They just bought their house. <laughs> I do. They have two kids. It's their like names Devil is, Wears Prada. Their names are Tommy and Billy. And Tommy loves baseball, and Billy loves to uh, loves to play the flute. And yeah. uh, and like she knows that. I just don't know anything about these people. No. And I don't care about anything no. about these people. You don't even bring any of those talking points up. No, I don't. You just sit there and you're quiet and awkward. And I'm like, I gave him so much fodder. <laughs> oh, kills me. Oh, Throw me a bone, Blake. Oh, man. <laughs> so Victoria says, stats are for nerds. Tell it to the people from Mallorca. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Oh, oh. Well done. Oh, that was good. That was, that was very good. That was very good. So, so yeah. Uh, uh, so, but he's giving all these things. And one of the things that Harry says is, I'm going to pretend, uh, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to make noise. And I'm going to pretend that I'm not here. Actually, hold on. It actually, he says, I'll be in my room making no noise and pretending I'm not there, said Harry. Mm-hmm. Um, I find this spectacular on a bunch of different levels. Uh, one, it really is Harry saying, I'm pretending that I'm not here. Yeah. Like I, like genuinely saying, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Trust me. I don't have to pretend that hard. Yeah. I'm not going to say a word. Trust me. I want out of this place. Yep. Um, so it works on that level, but it also works on another level in that it breaks Harry down to nothing. Literally nothing. Um, he says he's nothing. And this comes from a kid who just defeated the darkest wizard mm-hmm. of all time. This is like a kid that is in his home, as he puts yeah. it, is a rock star. I mean, he is Harry freaking Potter. Harry freaking Potter. Yep. <laughs> and, and here are the Dursleys, he's back to nothing. He's back to just Harry Potter. And you think about his reflecting upon last year's birthday, when his entire life changed, when Hagrid came busting down the door and he got to spend his birthday in Diagon Alley, yep. getting Hagrid Hedwig, who can't even fly right now. She's padlocked up in her cage, reprimanded left and right because Vernon Dursley can't stand her. Who cleans the poo? <laughs> you know? like yeah. I know you can feed her and stuff, but like let's be real, Hedwig's... Hedwig needs to spread her wings. Well, and fly. it's also locked too, right? That cage. That's so, what I just said. No, I, I, no. I, so it's padlocked. How to tell when the hosts aren't listening? Yeah, yeah. No, I was <laughs> listening, but I was trying to follow <laughs> up to that, saying it's locked. Yeah. So they're like, how do you open the door to clean the poo? That's what I literally just said. No, you said who cleans the poo? Like, welcome to the party, okay? <laughs> welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so here he was. His entire life changed. Like you said, he felt so at home. He felt so special. He was gifted beyond 
anything he'd ever had before. He had cakes and sausages and Hedwig mm-hmm. all in one day. Yep. And, and he got on, all and this on stuff. And on this day, he's got nothing. 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 They don't even nothing. remember that it's his birthday. And what makes it Dudley so much does, worse. Oh, yeah. He, he does it to stick it to him. But what makes it worse, not that his family doesn't remember, but that his best friends aren't sending him cards. Ron had said, you know, I'm going to try to invite to have you over. There's nothing of the sort coming. And here he was saying, you know, I don't even miss, like the thing that I miss the most isn't the sports, isn't the school. It's these two friends who became my family. Right, right. And they... They haven't contacted me all summer, nonetheless. In my right, birthday. and that and that vulnerability, I think, is what uh, brings Harry back down uh, in status. Uh, yeah, in universe, sure, absolutely. But also for us as the reader, if you let's just say for the sake of argument that you had read this book when it first, uh, like uh, the Sorcerer's Stone when it first came out, and then all of a sudden a year later you're reading the Chamber of Secrets and you kind of forgot about Harry, but you had this memory of him, kind of like how Harry has his memory of what just happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I think this works, the recap of this chapter works yeah. so well, because it's like, because it kind of is like, yeah, we had this thing and there were feasts and there was like, you know, um, there was like Quidditch and um, there was this, you know, the Dark Lord and Harry kind of wins and, you know, but he doesn't. And, you know, so it, re- it recounts all of that. But it brings you back to a place where you can actually find Harry not only likable, but to a place where you can relate to him. Being And that's why yeah. being back at the Dursleys at the beginning of each of these books is an absolute treasure. It's one of the genius things that the author has done for this story. And it makes you pain for Harry. I think you see him as brave and being on top and being this courageous man, you know, young man. But really, he is this emotionally abused, sometimes physically abused little boy who, you know, is yelled at by um, his his uncle and aunt. He's mistreated all the time by his cousin. Um, you know, it's just left and right. I mean, even so much, he just tries to say, you've forgotten the magic word. Like, how many of us are, are used to saying that? Like, don't forget the magic word. And he mm-hmm. says that, and they go off on him because he's not supposed to utter the word magic. Mm-hmm. One thing that I did love that he did to get back at them is he would just, like, say random made-up words or, you know, oh, like, yeah, little... Oh, yeah, like, hocus-pocus. Jiggery-pokery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hocus-pocus, squiggly-wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> and Dudley would run away, Mom! He's doing you know what you know at least he had that um and there's an interesting line here that is said um you know it's said that petunia knew that harry didn't do magic but she would know what magic is right yeah because of her sister yes um petunia is an odd character because she she fills or she bridges a gap between the two worlds for Harry. Yep. <laughs> the cat. The, what are you doing? Sorry, our cat is. If you're listening on the podcast app, you're like, like <sighs> yeah, you, you you must hear the purring. That is not Mary, <laughs> just lusting after my immense wit and uh, <laughs> my rather large brain. Uh, that's my cat. Um, she bridges the Petunia bridges the gap between the the magical world and the Muggle world. I took it Harry. as because um, you know it's in that same thing. So um, you know Dudley ran away, and Aunt Petunia knew he hadn't really done magic, but he still had to duck as she aimed a heavy blow at his head with the soapy frying pan. She did aim it at his she head. Aimed it at his head. She didn't chuck it. She aimed it like potato, potato. Uh, uh, I saw that more as Mary, not say, that. Just say it. Just say it. Stats for nerds. Blake, in case you don't know, I'm a nerd. Okay? <laughs> I care about this stuff. I don't necessarily think that it's because of Petunia's exposure to magic that she knows that Harry isn't doing it. I think by this point, it's July 31st, and Harry's been jiggery, piggery, hocus pocus, squiggly wiggling mm-hmm. all summer long, and it still scares Dudley. But by this point, Petunia's like, honey, he d- he's not doing it. Mm-hmm. 
Squiggly Wiggly doesn't do anything right now in case you <laughs> But Dudley's not the brightest bulb in the bunch. No, not at all. And I think I think Petunia's up and up where she's like, he's done he probably said hocus pocus again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Dudley, shut up. Okay, you're fine. Do you have a pigtail? No, you're fine, you're Dudley. Fine, kid. Go back out. We had to go to London to get the tail taken off. Grab a Kool-Aid and go back outside. <laughs> this is the nineties. <laughs> Welcome to the nineties, Mr. Bonks. <laughs> if those for those father of the bride uh fans out there uh so yeah i mean that's essentially this because harry can't do any magic he's afraid to do it he thinks about unlocking um but yeah but he doesn't want to take the risk no because he knows he's gonna get in trouble because he knows alohomora we haven't seen him do a single spell Mm -hmm. um oh we did see him do it in the in the movie um what did he do in the movie no we didn't see him do a a spell in the movie is what i'm saying um okay lumos can you like call her over? Lumos is being very aggressive right yeah. now. Yeah, me She's a like, I love my mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but he obviously knows Alohomora, and he doesn't use that because he knows that he's going to get in trouble. They've they've made it abundantly clear, and I feel like they must really like lay into this with the kids. Like the week before school ends, like now remember, children. <laughs> You cannot do magic right. outside of Hogwarts. You will get in trouble and you will get found. I, this is also a case of, if you recall, uh, in the first book, we discussed pretty heavily the idea that the Dursleys were trying to hang on to what whatever was their normal life. Uh, something that they just they, they couldn't dare to give up because of Harry. And in this chapter, we have the same thing. And and this might be, well, let, let's say this first. What have I told you, thundered his uncle, spraying spit all over the table. You could just see it. Spray, what have I told you? <laughs> About saying the M word in our house, meaning magic. Yeah. How dare you threaten Dudley, roared Uncle Vernon, pounding the table with his fist. I just, I warned you, I will not tolerate mention of your abnormality under this roof. So, this again is a case of the Dursleys holding on to um, their n- normality. Mm-hmm. But even tighter now, in, in as... Um, we joked about uh, Petunia th- throwing the, 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 the frying pan or whatever. I didn't joke about it, Blake. Well, we talked about it. But their their cartoonishness goes up a level because they are fully aware of Harry's knowledge now. Mm-hmm. And Harry is fully aware of how much they knew. Yep. So that, that level of cartoonishness just takes it up a level yep. so that they can tamp it down, tamp down the magic, the abnormality even further. Mm. So... And he even says abnormality, which in this case would suggest that he, in fact, Vernon Dursley, is normal. That's all he wants to be. But none of these things are normal. Mm -hmm. None of what he is doing to Harry, locking him up, locking up his his broom, not caring if he doesn't make the Quidditch team next season, locking up his wand, locking up his quill, his his everything Mm -hmm. in the cupboard down below. uh, None of that is normal. Yet yeah. he's saying that Harry is the abnormal one. Just food for thought. So this abnormal person is having nightmares. He's waking up at night, drenched in a cold sweat, wondering where Voldemort was now, remembering his livid face, his wide, mad eyes. And this, of course, is when Harry realizes that something was staring back at him. Two enormous green eyes had appeared among the leaves. Imagine that. Like, thinking about your nightmares, daydreaming about, ooh, that was so terrifying, and he is still out there. And now you're just looking at a bush. Someone's (laughs) looking right back at you. (laughs) Can you handle that? Just just hanging in there. Just hanging, you know, whatevs. And then, uh, of course, he gets in trouble, and he has to go do all of these really boring chores. Um, It pretty much sounds like my day. Uh, You know, (laughs) washing the car, mowing the lawn, trimming the flower beds. I mean, he's getting the tan, at least, but it's a hot day. It's July July 31st. Um, And, of course, the Masons come over, and Harry runs upstairs, and there is someone on his bed. So this this chapter really catches you up quick. Um, it reminds you that Harry doesn't like Snape. It reminds you of what he accomplished but last it, year. But also, it's he says he doesn't like Snape, but he also says something very interesting. He kind of misses Snape. Like he misses, he misses everything Draco. About yeah, or, or it's, isn't it something about Snape as well? 
He said he missed the castle with its secret passageways and ghosts, his classes, though perhaps not Snape, the oh, potions okay, yeah. master. All right, fair enough. Yeah, he it's said Draco. that he yeah, could right. possibly miss Draco. Yep, yeah, yep. I loved that passage. I, if if I were going to choose a passage to read, it would have been that one. But mm. um, yeah, so well written. The, it, you, you can almost feel like the author kind of graduated a little bit after writing the first book and moving on to the second one. The the bit of wit and humor is there. I'm, I'm in on it. I'm in on the, the author, how she's already changing the, the game for this book. I do still have a problem with the faculty at Hogwarts. Um, you know, one of the things, here we are in this time of COVID, and one of the things that a lot of pro in school supporters are saying is that the emotional support needs for the children um, are often met at school. There's the school therapist. They make sure that they're fed well, that they're taken care of, that they can report if there's child abuse or child neglect. Um, And there's people there to check in on them. Mm -hmm. And what makes me sad is that people aren't checking in on Harry. Like there's no faculty member who knows, but I also don't know to which degree Harry let people know he was being mistreated aside from Hagrid. Mm -hmm. And so, but, but even still Hagrid knew how badly like that they had lied, that they hadn't told him that much. I don't think he knew how much he was abused, but they knew he was living in a cupboard under the stairs. So there's a lot of things that are, in my opinion, red flags. And I'm just sitting there being like, where's the school therapist at Hogwarts? who should be checking in on Harry, right. who should be saying, you know what, Harry, how about you go home for like a couple of weeks and then you come here for a summer internship? Sure. You know? <laughs> just come clean some toilets. Just just work with Hagrid, you you'll know? Be, you'll be fine. Yes. We'll figure it out. Go, yes. into, go into the Forbidden Forest and for, probably, for a little John. When probably says every time he's home with the Dursleys, like it just, it pains me that particularly Dumbledore like knew because he was writing the letters to the cupboard under the stairs that Harry was being mistreated. So it yep. hurts my little heart. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like um, th- there's a lot that is happening with Harry as it relates to his journey, <laughs> as it relates to his journey from being going from Hogwarts to the Dursleys. Um it's it's almost that bit of torture mm-hmm. that you have to do to your main character, yeah, um, to make them come down a level. I mean, but let's be real: Harry Potter's tortured well enough. Yeah, but uh, like the, but the, I know the, what you mean. The idea is to continually do so. Right? I think it also establishes our Muggle sense of normalcy, so that when he does return to the Wizarding world, it right. is fancy and new. Right. It absolutely. reminds us that this takes place where this is the normal big deal. Right. We're like schmoozing with this. With the Masons is like the ultimate thing versus a Quidditch match or defeating the Dark Lord. Right. So this all being said, um, why don't you step into someone else's perspective, oh, Blake? Is, is it time to do that? It is time. It is. It's time one of my to favorite do, times. It is time to do that. Let's uh, let's do it. Holy cricket! You're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. And Take it away. You are. I'm gonna be Vernon Dursley. Yes. I'm absolutely gonna be Vernon Dursley. Because, you know what? I, I'm i here just trying to provide for my family. I'm doing the best that I can. You want to go to Majorca, wherever go to that Mallorca. is? Wait, I don't I even listen- know where it is, but I want to go. <laughs> when I listened to it on the um, audiobook version, I always thought he was saying New Yorker. <laughs> If I get this, if I if I get this sale, that's it. I'm taking you all to New York. <laughs> I was like, wow, they're so cultured. Wow, they're, they're going to New fly York. across the pond. Maybe that's go see amazing. a show. That's amazing. Yeah, can I go see Hamilton? Have some fun. <laughs> maybe go see the Curse of Child. I don't know. Wait, 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 maybe we'll make some bad decisions. I don't know. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm going to be Vernon Durst because here I am, just doing the best that I can. I want to take my family to Majorca. I, I'm selling some drills. I'm doing the best that I can with that. And I got a guy that's coming to my house. Clearly, he wants to buy some drills, too. All I got to do is just nail the deal. And I'm on my way to Majorca. But I got this kid in my house. A kid that I don't like. A kid that I didn't want. A kid that's weird. Mm. And just don't be weird. I, all I want you to do is don't be weird. Let me do this. Let me do what I got to do. I feel like do. that's what I say in my head every time we go to someone's house for dinner about you. <laughs> Blake, this child likes basketball. Blake, this child plays the flute. Don't forget, this person just had this major thing. And inside I'm thinking, just don't be weird. Just don't, just be, don't weird. be weird. <laughs> Continue. Continue, Vernon. I need, I need to get the drills. I need to get them sold. 
And w- what you need to do is just sit upstairs, shut up, let me seal the deal, and then I'm taking my family on a vacation. Would he have taken Harry? Yeah, he's got to take Harry. No, he doesn't. He yeah. could leave her with Mrs. Fig. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And all yeah. of her cats. Yep, you're right. So, no, Harry, just don't get in the way. Let let Ver, let let Dudley over here talk about the kids and whatever, and then let let my wife talk about how good the good at golf the other guy is. And where'd you get the dress, Mrs. What's your name? Mason. M- Mrs. Mason, sure. See, what you else? don't listen. You don't listen to the facts that I lay out for dinner parties. No, <laughs> no I don't. I don't. See, that's the thing. I am literally the worst at names, and you could you could tell me. If I didn't know you right now, Mary, I'm, I, I'm Mary. I, I'm saying, but if I didn't know you, and okay. we're sitting across the table from each other, and you're eating something or whatever, and you're like, "Oh, hey, I'm Mary." Of course, I'm eating something. Uh, <laughs> tacos, um, <laughs> and you'd be like, "Oh, hey, I'm Mary. What's your name?" I'd be like, "Oh, Blake." Yeah, and you know, "Oh, what do you do?" Blah blah blah, and I, I will forget your name within two minutes, mm-hmm. if that, if that, M- maybe a minute. So come on, Harry, just just sit up there. Don't be weird. Let me do my thing, and I I don't like you anyway. So just get out of my way. Wow. What do I need you for? Good thing we get out of this house pretty you're, you're soon. You're a PETA. Don't be a PETA. Don't be a PETA. <laughs> That's all I want out of you. And we're not talking Hunger Games. <laughs> all right. Nice job. Different Thanks. perspective. Yeah. Thank you very well much. Done. All right. Time for the email questions that were mailed in. And those of you who are tuning in live, please feel free to submit a question. Here's my suggestion for you. Start the question with... Um, a lightning bolt emoji so that we can see it and we will know that that is a question you would like us to read. So once again, if you have a question for us in your live, use the lightning bolt emoji and we'll scroll and find those too. And if you are uh, listening to us in the podcast app, just email us at maryandblakemedia at gmail.com yes. for the next chapter. Or if you have questions about this one, we will answer it next chapter. Perfect. Let's do it. Oh, Miles head. All right, so we got a couple of emails that we got going on here. The first one is... Uh, actually came from Wendy. She was talking about uh, the Sorcerer Stone, the film for us. Okay. This is one of the ones that we didn't get to, so I wanted to get this here. Uh, what is your biggest disappointment in the movie's representation of a scene or character from the book? Or a scene or character that didn't make the movie from Wendy? My biggest disappointment is when they come back from the zoo and Vernon's holding Harry by the scruff of his hair like or by his ear and he comes on in and goodness, poor little Daniel Radcliffe. It's like the weakest moment, I think, for him in the whole entire movie. Yep. He goes... It was like magic. And you could just tell he was like, I have said this a hundred times. I am so bored. And he's kind of like looking off kilter. And it's just my least favorite moment. Um, You know, then the door slams and Vernon, you know, looks through the little cracks. There is no such thing as magic and slap. So right there, it made up for it. Sure. But in that moment in the hallway, I cringe and I cringe every time I watch it. It's just very hard for me. How about you, Blake? Any scene or character that, that you missed that didn't make the movie? or anything in the movie that disappointed you in Sorcerer's Stone? Um, not much disappointed me. I kind of said this in the last episode in that it was a lack. It was the how they changed to the ending. Changing the ending for me in that Harry was the one who solely defeated Quirrell to me went against many of the themes that I think the book was trying to to get across to us as viewers um, in that it, it, it's, it's about family. It's mm-hmm. about love it's about friendship you don't do these things alone no matter what you're doing you were alone with the dursleys your yeah. your blood family but you've now gone to hogwarts you found your purpose you found your chosen family and chosen mm-hmm. family can be that much better than than blood family if not more mm-hmm. and it doesn't take it, you can't do it alone, especially when you're you're fighting these two stories that are combining in the Sorcerer's Stone. Though, so, like I said, the wee Hogwarts, yes, and then the ooh Dark Lord. <laughs> there, there are two. There's this big thing. There yeah. are two very distinct stories mm-hmm. that collide with each other uh, that I think the movie doesn't follow up on. I appreciate that. Um, Tamara wrote in saying, it is hard for me to see Harry's uncle buying food for Hedwig. If they would not let her out, what do you think they use to feed her? 
She felt bad for her being in the little cage all summer break. I think Harry had to smuggle like food scraps, you know, like yeah. the extra little bits from the roast. Um, maybe he'll just keep extra things from his plate and bring them on up because I agree. Like she, she can't hunt, nor would Vernon be going and getting like mice for her or something to eat. So I think that Harry has to feed her scraps that he either smuggles up or he's allowed to take up to his room. Yep. Uh, Rebecca asks on Facebook, I don't remember if you two decided this, but do you plan on doing a discussion of the Cursed Child in the podcast? I still have yet to read it and think it'd be fun to chat it all out here. Marvin? Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Uh, It'll be at the very end. Yeah, the very, very end. Well, that's a good question, actually. How do you want to handle all this? Because do do you want to read the Fantastic Beasts book and then talk about the films? Yeah. Or do you want to just... Do the we're, films. we're doing the whole universe. Okay. Man. All right. And then do you want to watch We uh, can't watch The Cursed Child. No, you can't. No, but what I'm saying is do you want to watch uh, a very part of musical and do that? Yeah. Okay. And then do you want to do The Cursed Child after a very part of musical? I think that we would do um I don't know. Let's let's figure that out. But we are doing it. If you so guys have I, a recommendation on how yeah, you want us to do order. it, we, we, will, we will gladly yeah. listen. All right. This one comes from Stephanie on Facebook. She says, I know Blake often has big, and by big, I mean big feelings. Big. Huge. 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 Uh, 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 on, on how exposition is handled in books and shows. And I don't think that the author did a great job of it here. Any ideas of how, if you were writing it, you could incorporate the exposition any better here? Um, no. No, I, there isn't. Um, there isn't because in order to make exposition interesting, mm-hmm. you have to do it in an interesting way, or you have to, in my opinion, have one person saying something to another person that they don't know. So, for example, if you were to go into a room and if you were watching a show and, and it just a jabroni like me walks into a, a hospital room and I'm looking at you, Mary, and you're on the bed and you're sick. And this is so morbid. Where oh, just, is this just, going? Just, just go with okay, me. Okay, so I'm sick. With, I'm, I'm, with what? <laughs> whatever. Who cares? Oh my gosh, I care. What's I wrong the, with me? And I go How the, long have I been here? And I go to the doctor and I say... <laughs> Oh my God, what's happening? Do I know you? <laughs> yes, you do know me. I'm your husband. Oh, wait, so this is, oh, okay, this is getting good. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. We, we, we took your face off. Like in movie Face Off, and we put another oh. face on you because you Why? had a, you had moldy stuff growing on your cheek. This is so gr- I can't drink <laughs> my kombucha. Isn't kombucha mold? <laughs> you were drinking too much kombucha, and mold started growing on your cheek. Oh, goodness me. Is this like real? Are we talking about something that yes. there's a reason for? So what for? I'm saying is, if I go to the doctor and I say, doctor, what's going on? What he's going to do is he's going to tell me what is wrong with you. He's going to tell me why you're why it's wrong, why you got too much mold on you, and how much kombucha you were drinking. That is all expository dialogue. Okay. The doctor is informing me yes. of stuff that he knows, but I don't. Yes. Or the perfect example is that of uh, the dino DNA guy. Dino in, DNA. In, in Jurassic Park. Welcome to Jurassic Park. It's a movie within a movie explaining how dino DNA I'm is made. I'm over the now. Okay, so that's an interesting way of doing expository dialogue. The only difference. I'm so bored by this point. Continue. The only difference between the mold on my face and the dino DNA. I mean, I know you're trying to make it exciting for me. You're talking about two of my favorite things: kombucha and dinos. Land the plane, Blake. <laughs> Fine, Mary. Fine, Mary. <laughs> Land the plane, Helen. <laughs> so, <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is, in this instance, for the book, Marvin, you are on another level today. It's and the kombucha talk. It is. It's way too much mold. Uh, all the mold people from Outland are going to be coming in here saying that you can't get mold from the kombucha. Blake, <laughs> drop the mold. So in this instance for the book, um, there's no real way to give us exposition because it's all coming from Harry's thoughts. It's all coming from his own perspective. Mm-hmm. And he is recounting it the way that he can recount it. There's in his no own doctor. Brain. There's no doctor. There's no dino DNA movie. There's. It's just him 
thinking about what he misses. And I think that is probably the best way to do it. I think that's the best choice. You talk about it from the perspective of the character, which is like, I miss Hogwarts. I miss these things. I even kind of miss Draco, even though he he ragged on me and did Mm -hmm. all the things that he did. That's the only way I think you can do it. Uh, Elizabeth. Sorry, go said, ahead. did anyone check on Harry for the 10 years he was at Dursley's before Hogwarts? I don't think so. I don't think so. And that's what upsets me. Victoria says, random. We're looking for the lightning bolts, Blake. Oh, okay. Random. Is it just the lighting or why does Blake have a glove hand tan? <laughs> Mary, go ahead. Blake uh, rides a motorcycle. Hold on. Uh, let me see if I can uh, bring myself up here. And he totally has a glove hand tan. There you go. And it never goes away. Never. It's it's burned into my skin. <laughs> he also should wear sunscreen. I do. I have it. Like that sunscreen bottle is from like 2009. Like it's, just nine, not even 19. Oh, uh, let's see. What else we got? To... I think there were a couple more higher up there questions. Were? Yeah. I don't think so. I'm telling you. No, there wasn't. Okay. Uh, that's it. Um, Thank you all for submitting. People and I were wondering dig where the lightning bolts. People, people were wondering where uh, the land the plane thing came from. That was from our show. This is us too. Go to maryandblake.com. Check out this is us too, which is a podcast about this is us. Uh, yeah, it it was a joke uh, that that can only be heard about Helen Hunt and Jurassic Laura Park. Dern and Laura Linney and Jurassic <laughs> Park, and it was land the plane. I, I it's just. Uh, so we say that whenever someone is just taking forever yep. and Mary's bored, yes, generally. generally. Generally, it's just Mary's bored and I need to <laughs> land the plane. <laughs> uh, so that is that for now. Uh, and uh, are, we, are you ready to close this out? Do you have anything else that you want to I was thoughts? ready five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Another level today. <laughs> Savage, Mary. <laughs> One thing I do want to mention to you guys before we let you go is if you go to jointhenerdclan.com, I have started putting up all of our show notes on there, and I've started actually giving you early access to the podcast. So uh, if you want to hear... Uh, and it's for anybody? It's for any, uh, Well, it's for everybody at jointhenerdclan.com. Yeah, but any level? A- any level can hear the podcast early. Uh, the, the level uh, is... Um, is, uh, uh, no, that's Lanja. But I think the Sassanok level I- and up is for uh, the show notes. So you'll be able to read the, what we have, what we see, how we go back and forth. Uh, you can do that. And we're also going to start p- putting up some other little personal things uh, up there on jointhenerdclan.com just that are the Potterverse related, which is really exciting. I'm, I'm very happy about that. So go to jointhenerdclan.com. You'll get our show notes. You'll get early access to the podcast. You'll be able to listen to it that night, the night that we're recording it. <laughs> Uh, and or in, and then for those of you who aren't there and you listen to the podcast app, it will be there the following morning mm-hmm. around nine or ten or so. So, uh, so that is that. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's see. Got another one here. Do you from Victoria? Do you think this movie suffered by not including all the manual labor Harry had to do with the Dursleys? No, I don't think it. I don't. I wouldn't say it suffered. I think we get a pretty clear understanding of how wretched the Dursleys are. You know, are. I, I I just thought about this. There's a great. Well, you know, I'm going to save that. I'm okay. going to save. I'm going to save that for later on. Okay. I'm going to save that for later on. Uh, okay. So yeah, let's that. That's that. Let's um, close out the show. If you want to be able to join us live and join the conversation, please remember to sign up for our complimentary texting service. All you do is text the phone number 81010, that's 81010, and in the message field, have the at sign and write right under it, right after it, Elder Wand. So at E-L-D-E-R-W-A-N-D. When you do that, you will get signed up for our completely complimentary texting reminders, and I'll let you know when we're going live. We do, of course, usually go live on our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube pages Monday nights around 8.15, and then either Wednesday or Thursday nights, depending upon if our children are sleeping. If you find any value in what we do here at Mary and Blake, go to jointhenerdclan.com and check out all the great things that we have there for Outlander and This Is Us, and be a part of that community, that vibrant community of nerds that all hang out together. (laughs) Including uh, my take on Midnight Sun, which is part of Blake's book club, which is awesome. I'm so happy that I get a chance to do that for everybody 
That you go is from Harry's there. perspective in Chamber of Secrets straight to, to Edward. Edward Cullen's so perspective. So much broodiness. <laughs> oh my god, I hate my life. I think Bella hates me. She shouldn't be my friend. And yet I love her. And I love her so much. It's so good. It's I love so her so good. much it hurts my being. Stop making fun of it because you kind of love it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, remember to leave us a review in your podcast app. That means a lot to us. And for now, my name's Mary. My name's Blake. Mischief Managed. Thank you.